mate. That's definitely a croc. Definitely, without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt in my mind, that is a croc. As long as he stays there and we stay here, we should be pretty well right. <laughs> He's coming a bit closer, actually. This is insane. Cape York Creek, I don't know what it's called. It hasn't got a name on the map, could be anything. Uh, we could be, I don't know, it could be the first fish this, I wouldn't have a clue. No, a few locals know about it, mate, but that's the whole thing about this Cape York region, especially right up to the top. It's just completely untouched. I mean, a lot of people come up to Cape York, go to the point, get their photo, and they rip back home. But yep. the tip itself yep. has some of the best four-wheel driving, camping yep. and exploring, and just plain old adventuring that you can ever do. I reckon you can spend another two, come to the tip, spend another two weeks, and probably not see everything that's within just a very small radius of the tip of Cape York. We're gonna try and show you how. Watch how we got to this very point. Now. Mate, that barra has got my name on it. Hang on a second, I'm gonna overcast you. Oh, you did too. That's. On this trip, we're showing you that there's so much more to see north of the Jardine. We're kicking things off from Punsand Bay and then heading out to Somerset Beach, where we'll be tackling the five beaches. And after that, we're heading down to Saad Bay and exploring the wonders of Usher Point. Up front, my good mate Shauno is in the Dirty 30 and riding shotgun is Justin from NQ Crash. I'm back in Shorty and I'm being followed by Dion in the Scamper Campus 79 towing a Ranger XL. And last but not least, my old mate Stu from Wholesale Automatics. You know, most people think there's really only one way to get up to the tip once you, uh, once you get off the ferry, and that is just to barrel your way north on the main road, but it's actually two ways. Yeah, mate, when the locals told us about this track, the Rover Flats Trail, they sort of smiled and grinned and said, oh, you're going to like that, boys. <laughs> so I reckon we might be in for a bit of a treat today. Yeah, it's going to be a bit wet, I think. Oh, I think so. What's it supposed to have on? A bit of mud, I'd imagine, because we're going in through well. From what I can see on the uh, BMS, it's quite swampy through here. Is that right? The boys say it could take anywhere from a couple of hours to a whole day. They've, they've seen the whole road just underwater before. Ah, <laughs> yes. Underwater. All right, well, to the tip, the backwards way, the back door way. The Roma Flats track is one of those tracks that you can really hit or miss. You tackle it in the wet and you could spend days there. And in the dry, well, it could be a walk in the park. As for us, it's pretty good. Enough of a challenge, but I reckon we'll be right to make camp tonight on time. There's still a fair amount of water around, but the Cape didn't really get much of a wet this season. You can imagine what this would be like in the middle of the wet. Oh, yeah, boys, we've got a bit of a water crossing. Looks like it's quite muddy. I'm just going to ease into this one. Would you look at Shorty go, you know, I love this little truck. All I've got to do is point and drive. Oh, it stinks. And look at Stu go. He's just cruising through in that auto of his, making it look easy. This is one of those creek crossings where there could be anything inside. And so for that reason, we like to hit it slow and then come out fast. Like all water crossings, there's no point in going in like a bull at a gate. That's just how you're gonna do damage and end your trip before it's even started. It wasn't long and we'd hit our first challenge. Should be quite interesting because it looks a little bit rutted. Do be careful, Sean, when you come over to your left and lean. I don't reckon I'd be far from the truth in saying that this track hasn't been driven this season. There's logs down and this is super soft right here. Boys, I might get you to jump up, we might end a few horsepowers here. Yeah. Alright. You ready? This is gonna feel awkward. Point turn. I still have that front locker on. It changes how you can turn a vehicle and the front locker on. Turn it off obviously to try and turn that corner. It sometimes takes us a little bit. Oh, well, Graham, you should drive that easy, mate. Alright, not much choice here but to follow the line that Sean put in. This truck constantly surprises me with its capability. I reckon the short wheelbase has helped me out a lot here too. Oh, oh yes! Now, I reckon this is going to be pretty tough for Dion. Even though he's twin locked, he's got a terrible turning circle in that 79 of his, and he's got to get that trailer around. Okay, well, that's the truck up. Well, yeah. He's just got to manoeuvre that trailer around. Yeah, you can see how he's had the same issue with Shauno there with that front locker. 
This is the perfect example of needing a spotter and Justin's quick on the scene to hold him up to avoid damage to the trailer. Good work, fellas. Dion's through without any damage. Thanks, boys. Finding tracks like this really is the pinnacle of four-wheel driving in the Cape. You see, not many people will get to do this. And doing it in a four-wheel drive, well, that's the only way to do it in my books. After a little bit of rainforest section, we hit the beach. And what a place to see. It really pays off having a chat to the locals up here. Drop into the croc tent on the way to the tip and ask Dale and Lee for a map of the area. And trust me, you won't be disappointed. Before I could even get out of Shorty, Shauna is already out and looking for fresh rock oysters. And yeah, you guessed it, I wasn't far behind you. This has got to be one thing you can't miss when you're coming up the Cape. But it's not just oysters we're after. Small or not, you'll take it. Absolutely beautiful. I think I'll probably get a dozen in about a metre square around here. It's just so metal. There's another one down there. There's everywhere. Yeah, there he is right down there. It's a mud crab just hiding under these oysters. Sort of fashion up a bit of fencing. Well, I don't know if this is going to work. No way to find out. He's going to come racing out with a bit. Yep, he's going to attack your foot, mate. He doesn't want to see you. Oh, that's Nothing. Sean Whale. Ah, yeah. Little male mud crab. So, you need to measure them between the carapace, there and there. I think they're going to be 13 centimetres in Queensland. I've got a book in there, I'll check. I'll double check to make sure he is. So that might be lunch. The first bit of lunch, I reckon there's a few more around here. We'll get a couple more out, hopefully. Now, the actual legal size is 15 centimetres, so we let this fella go, but Sean O was determined to get a big one. But after a solid half an hour's effort, this is all he could find. <laughs> Oysters it is then, mate. These are a little bit of salt and pepper, some hot sauce, Cape York oysters fresh off the rocks. Have a look at that. Even if you don't like oysters, you've got to come down here and try these because they are. I'm dribbling on myself, I'm so excited. Really nice. Mm. Just about as good as it gets. <laughs> Dion's just in seventh heaven. Do you know what that is over there? It's a tip of Cape York. It really is. You can always see tourists taking their photo and yep. getting ready to barrel back down that road. Don't, stop. Come over here. We'll keep going this way, I reckon, shall we? Mm. All right, mate, let's yeah. go. Okay, now, remember that rainforest section I was talking about? Well, we had to get back through that. And that proved to be a bit harder than we first thought, and there wasn't much room for a run-up. Dion was going nowhere fast with that trailer on the back. With the extra weight of the camper, the uh, soft sand, mate, just can't make it up that hill. It's always logistically difficult when you're on these tight single tracks in order to get the vehicles in a position to get a recovery underway. Dion's winch packed it in on him a while back, haven't been able to fix that. I haven't got a rear winch, so I'm not much used to him. sean has got a rear winch, so I've gotten out of the way. I'm trying to get Sean under this tree and use his rear winch to bring Dion up. I tell you what, Sean, that winch has paid for itself many, many times over. It's not something you see on every four-wheel drive, but gee, it's handy. You can see just how soft this is. Dion has no traction, and without a winch here, it'd be days before anyone could come and help. But now that he's up, we've got a new challenge. The 79 is the tallest truck and probably the hardest to manoeuvre through these trees. With a bit of landscaping on a dead tree, we managed to get him through. Lucky, these trailers are built super tough. Now that we're through that bit, we've got just one last hill before making camp. That looks like a rocky little climb, mate. I tell you what, Justin and I are be best mates after this drive. We're just bouncing around in here <laughs> and nearly knocking heads. Come on, old girl, up you get. Yes, I'm up. Well, nearly. Oh, yeah. Come on up. Yeah, 
There's so much torque in that 79, and you can see that Dion's just taking it slow and steady, just letting the truck walk through, and of course, the trailer just follows. The auto in Stu's truck makes this effortless. In fact, I bet Stu's got some music playing in there, and he's probably even playing the mouth up as he's driving up this hill. As you can see, it's pretty windy. When I say pretty windy, it's an understatement. It's about 45 knots in the shade. I'll tell you, we're cooking up a green chicken curry. Justin's recipe, I can't take credit for this one, mate. We've got a lot of chicken here for the boys. We'll brand it off first, get it up to some, get it up to some heat, throw the curry paste in, get it up to some speed again, and we'll just go from down that. Veggies, some rice, oh, we get all, yeah. and a lot of chilli, just for Graham. First thing I'm gonna do, though, jump into the Waco. In here, I should have all the main ingredients for a chicken stir fry. Mainly the chicken. Here's a couple of breasts here. Oh, I've got to dig a bit deeper for the other ones, mate. Yeah. Ooh, Forest Gold. I noticed you've already helped yourself yeah, to one, mate. I couldn't wait for you. <laughs> That's a go. So we're going to dice all that chicken up. We're going to put it into the hot pan. I can get the hot pan going. If you could, you can please. get the chicken going. Okay, all right. We've got some heat. We've got some heat. That's, that's important. Cooking in 45 knots of wind. You're cutting out some onion. Yep, you do that. If you can put, get the make sure that's hot, throw that on. Yep, I put a bit of oil in there. Definitely. You've, oh, you've done it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that should perfect. almost sizzle. Oh, yeah. All right. While that's browning up nice, I want to show you one quick thing. Would you have a go at this? Ford of Ashton Cape York 2016. This was made by Sarah the owner of Cape York Spares and Repairs. Yep. And, um, and also Choco, he, he put this together. He's a carpenter by trade. Made it for us. They camped just down beside us. Tell you what, absolute awesome people. We've used the workshop a lot <laughs> since we've been up here. We've had a few repairs. We needed a few spares, yes, so. <laughs> yes. Look at this. Yeah, what are you gonna do with that? Cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Make sure that goes that's back that's in the 30, mate. That's for everybody, eh? Hey? <laughs> All right, that's looking almost brown. So, what do you reckon? You happy with that? That's that was looking really good. Okay. Throw it in. We've got green Thai green curry paste. Now it makes it a heck of a lot easier. You can camp this stuff. Just you can buy it from any supermarket. It makes curries really easy. They've got a whole range, don't they, mate? Coconut cream, two tins of this. Probably needs to cook for another 20 or so minutes. I'm gonna cook that down. We're gonna add the veggies. Veggies. We've got some bamboo shoots and everything. Then we're gonna make a bit of rice, and then. We can eat. All right. So I've got a pan on heat. I want to make the rice. What I want to do here is, is about a cup of rice. A cup of rice straight into the pan with hot oil. You're probably thinking, that's not how you make rice, Sean. Trust me, just bear with us. The whole purpose behind this rice is we're actually sort of frying the rice a little bit in the pan with a bit of olive oil. We're chucking in onion for flavour mainly. And it sort of all fries together just for a couple of minutes. It doesn't have to be too crazy. So I want to do this at home. It's yep. garlic, onion, a bit yep. of oil. Fry it off first, then I go to the water. That's right. That is completely different to how oh, I do it. Oh, something different, something, show weird. me something new. It's a bit weird, but what'll happen is the onion and all that flavour will go through the rice. It makes it way more flavoursome. Oh, okay. Rice, yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah, that's that's now basically starting to shallow boil, if you yep. want to call it. Yep. I think it's time for the veggies. Veggies. All right. Veggies in. All, right, all those veggies are in now, mate. Oh, Can you give the good stir for give me, it please? Stir. Oh, that's oh. looking like a proper green curry. Look at the colour now. Okay, that rice is going right. 20 minutes, I reckon, no more, and we're going to have dinner served. Beauty, mate, I might go have another beer. I think we need to. <laughs> that's good, isn't it? Damn, guys. Yeah, that is a work of art. Yeah. That is the Mona Lisa. What's the verdict, boys? Mate, mm. I'm, I'm impressed. That is oh, good. Really, and it's bloody good, yeah. For a camp feed in 45 knot winds, tell you what, there you go, guys, a green chicken curry. Basic ingredients, stuff you can sort of take camping with you. I mean, it doesn't get any better. When it's blowing 45 knots out there, you got a nice warm green curry in here, that's about as good as it gets. What do you reckon, boys? Beautiful, mate. Superb. Mm. Don't go anywhere, because coming up in part two, we're gonna head out to the Five Beaches area. We're gonna see some of the most amazing parts of the East Coast. It's early morning and Sean and I are off for a fish. Sarah and Choco, the guys who kindly made the timber four-wheel drive action sign, have let us borrow their tinny for the morning with the hopes of 
bringing back a barra or two for breakfast. The good thing about this sort of creek is you can find absolutely anything but barramundi, mangrove jack, tarpon, queenfish, trevally, the list goes on. Let's hope we catch at least one of those and we'll be stoked. With the sun coming up, we've had no luck in getting anything at all. I reckon it's probably because Sean was there. Well, that's what I'm going to go with anyway. That's what I see. What, the big grey clouds? Storm coming in, mate. Yeah, you can feel it. It's really starting to pick up. All right, what do you say? We beach this and uh, go and jump in the trucks? Sounds good, mate. Sounds good. We might stick to dry land. All right, just one more cast. One more cast? <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, I love sand flies. <laughs> They're good for you. Right, one more cast. Cavitates. Cavitates like a boss. That's the only view I want when I'm cooking breakfast. How good is that? We're drenched from getting hit by that flash storm right there, but we've come back to the boys stuck into cooking up a feed for breakfast. Curry powder. Hello, the boys are back. Hey. Hello. Geez, that smells good. How'd you go? Well. Yeah, real good, mate. Um, glad you've got bacon. Yeah, exactly right. It's in the Waco already, is it? You fill it and it's done. Yeah. Well, this, this is my bacon, so. Well, that's right. You got plenty there. Mate, there we go. This is right. Oh, that looks. Oh, that looks. That's a sight for sore eyes. That is. That's good, mate. We got this breakfast in us. We got a stack of trucks to do today. We get out and hit them? Yep. No doubt about you, mate. Oh, that's a cheese and eggy number, isn't it? With everyone packed up, we're on our way out to the five beaches. But it's worth making a stop in at Somerset Beach before you do. Not only does it have great camping, but it's got a lot of history too. Well, this right here is the, uh, the graves of the Jardine family. Of course, they came up in 1864 and they brought with them, they were the first to actually do so, they brought with them 250 head of cattle and they drove those cattle over 1,000 miles to get up to the tip here and onto the beach. And this is where they came to rest after many, many years in the top end. You've got to really think about it, how harsh it would have been. We just arrived in trucks. I mean, our trucks aren't exactly new or flash or anything, but they are a lot flasher than the back of a horse. And that's all the Jardines would have known for the entire time they were up here, right through the wet season into the dry. Different time, it really was. This here is a monument to Kennedy, who was pivotal in exploring and opening up the Cape York Peninsula. Unfortunately, in 1848, he was speared fatally down near Usher Point. We're going to be heading tomorrow at a place called Escape River. So we're going to go and follow the trail, the history trail here. It's, it's a lot of rich history when you really think about it. It's quite remarkable. I think these people did it all on horseback, and Australia was a different place back then, let me tell you. Really, really tough in, in today's standards. But back then, this place was completely untouched. So. It's a privilege to be following this. Ah yes, the set in the west. It was time to leave this monument and start heading down towards the five beaches. And when Sean sees a beach, he gets excited. I quickly air down the bridge stones and we're on our way out to beach number one. Sure about this? I can't see the track at all. Yeah, it's nothing too hard, but it looks pretty bouncy. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's it, Justin. Don't let go of that handle over this stuff, mate. Actually, here's my word of advice. Don't ever let go of it. I know exactly what that truck is capable of. Once again, Dion is just taking it slow and steady, but at times I think he completely forgets that that trailer's back there because he knows it's going to follow him wherever he goes. Stu, well, Stu just likes to take a challenging line every now and again because he enjoys the drive. He's actually got a pedigree in racing <laughs> and you can see it in the way that he tackles terrain like this. Spot. How many people even know this exists? I don't even have the words. This is unbelievably picturesque. 
I think most people when they come up to Cape York, they just think, oh yeah, get the photo with the tip and they turn around and come back home. This is paradise, it's just undiscovered. Now, beaches two, three and four are all fairly straightforward and not very long. However, on a summer's day, I reckon that would be the perfect spot to pull up camp, get the barbecue going and just enjoy life. We just bumped into a couple of locals there. In fact, it was the, uh, the Bamingham Police Force having a camping weekend away. Thanks to me stubby holder boys. I'll be putting that to good use later on, you can bet. Now, that was beach number five. If you continue on, you of course come to what they call, the locals call beach number six, but in order to get down to it, pretty gnarly apparently, and that's why it doesn't get used that often. So, we're gonna turn left just up here and drop into the famous beach number six. Wish us luck, see how we go. Yeah, you should look down there. Sean, I can't see from here, mate. I'm, I'm just taking my time down here real nice and slow, because it's... Um, nice and steady. Oh, here we go. Down, down, down. What is it, that coffee rock, is it? Yeah, it's all coffee rock and, like, other little rocks and stuff, and just, just, just sort of run it out, you know? Oh, hang on. First gear, long range. Old shorty, I really have gotten to know this truck inside and out over the years and tracks like this for me now, it's just oh, really okay. a matter of settling down and letting the gearing do the work. That said, I reckon the next modification for me will be some reduction gears. Right, oh, Dion, come on down, mate. Dion, slow and steady, making sure he gets through in one piece, but at the same time, as I said before, I don't think he's too concerned about that trailer. He knows how tough they are. Of course, Dion, just like myself, is letting that manual do all the work. Engine braking when coming downhill and towing a trailer is everything. That said, however, on the other hand, having an auto with Wholesale Auto's lock-up kit is even better. Stu has basically got to do nothing coming down this hill. The engine and the lockup kit are doing everything for him and that auto is working perfectly. That said, when he wants to switch, he can and go straight back into manual mode and drive it just like a manual four-wheel drive. Definitely driving up into a storm. I think you might be right, Mr Dog. Oh, that's steep. This rocky terrain oh. is a little uncomfortable to drive through, I've got to be honest. That's it's also track. something oh. we must be very wary of when it comes to tyres. This kind of terrain isn't kind on tyres. We don't want to do any damage out here whilst we're so early into our trip. Yeah, look, if I didn't see some faint outlines of tyre tracks, I reckon I'd be feeling a bit nervous about coming down here. You got stuck here with that tire, it'd come right through here, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's not a question of are there crops here, it's a question of how many. Yeah, lots of them, mate. These big trees look very cool, but with their root systems and stuff. Yeah, those mangrove trees are something else, aren't they? Beach 7 through here is an absolute cracker. It seems to go forever. And the amount of beach combing that you could do here, well, I reckon you could find just about anything. In fact, that said, Sarah and Choco just the other day found a full dugout canoe that had washed out on the beach here. Now that is really something else. You'll find a heap of little creeks and streams just like this that lead down to the ocean. And you'll find the majority of them will be full of fish. But be wary folks, this is crop country. Now, once again, we couldn't stop Sean from having another cast. And I don't blame him, though. This is just the spot for it. Let's just hope he's a bit luckier than this morning. 
there's some little mangrove jacks. I can see one there. A foot of water, and there's mangrove jacks swimming around. That's really cool. Now, without a word of a lie, just as Shauno was about to give up, his luck turned. And of course, <laughs> oh mate, the cameras weren't rolling. Have a go at this. This is caught in about two foot of water, just sight casting a barramundi on the flats. That's about as good as fishing gets in my books. And more importantly, this right here is dinner. So not bad for a five minute stop at a creek. I say onwards and upwards. Nice one, mate. That is a cracking fish, but Seeing as there's no proof of you actually catching it, it didn't happen, buddy. <laughs> Cheers for dinner, though. We just made it right down to the end of the seventh beach on the five beach area. Our plan is, don't even ask, the plan is to go back to the fifth beach and then we're going to camp up there. The problem is, this was a nice campsite. The southeasterly winds are coming right through it, unfortunately. And the other big problem is the tide. If the tide comes it, in which it will overnight. In the morning it's going to be high tide. We're not going to be able to get off this beach till about lunchtime. We've got big plans to head south. So I think we're going to go back and set up camp. I reckon with this cloud cover we might need we might need spotties on going through that rainforest section. Yeah, you're not wrong mate. I reckon we um, might get some rain tonight too. With the weather coming in fast and while the going was good we decided to make a dash down south towards Saad Bay instead. We'd get some good k's in and beat the most of this rain that was heading our way. I tell you what though, we picked the right time to get off these beaches. You can see just how quickly this tide is coming in. Yeah, that's that last little challenge fellas that um, want to get up on top of this headland. It's going to be a little bit wet and maybe a bit more tricky going up than down. I was looking out there to the ocean then, I hope this rain does give us a bit of a reprieve. How much of a difference to the four sixes made you think? Oh, I can just pick in my line, I can go nice and slow. Last hill climb out was a bit of a doozy and actually caught me by surprise. Whilst I made it up in one go, I didn't choose the right gear and tried to come up in second gear low. It's too rocky for that and I had to do a swift gear change back into first and just crawl my way up. Dion of course did exactly the same as did Shauno. And I think it's so easy to come unstuck by just choosing a slightly wrong line, which is exactly what Stu did here. No dramas though. Reverse, have a bit of a look, pick another line, and he made it look easy on the second attempt. I need to reassess. Where is this big rock? Better. I think we're coming up to that um, sad point turn off, mate. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 heading north from here, eh? Yeah, look, it's, it fits the description what some of the locals in town were saying. I might actually just pull over here and just check it on the beaver vest. Hang on a sec. Alright, mate, hang on. I'll jump out and have a look here. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. Reckon this is the sad point turn off? Well, I think so, mate. A couple of locals are telling me this is the turn off here. I just wanted to check on the VOS to yep. make sure. And it, yep. yep, it looks like it goes all the way up. It's probably about 26 kilometres and it sort of backs down on itself there. What's the track like, don't I? It looks like a normal sort of track, it's nothing too crazy. Okay. Um, right. I don't think it gets a lot of traffic, but at the same time, I reckon a few locals use it. Well, let's uh, let's let's prove them wrong and make it a happy point, not a sad point. <laughs> well, Alright, so we have to reverse up a bit, yeah? Yeah, yeah. alright, All right. let's go in let's there. Do it. Okay, okay, cool. Our time had come to an end on the five beaches and definitely something to put on your list when you're next up the Cape. We made our way down to Saad Bay and found a perfect little spot sheltered from the wind next to a lagoon. Although I don't think we'll be doing any swimming in here tonight. There's got to be a heap of snapping handbags in there. I reckon we best stick to the shallows tonight, boys. Dion's not mucking around though. We may still get a shower of rain, so we straight into setting up the Ranger XL for the night. And I'm pretty sure Shauno's going to be putting that kitchen to use soon with that fresh barra. I'm up and out of the sand in my rooftop tent and the rest of the boys, they're swagging it out in the wind. The key with cooking a barra on the coals is to make sure first and foremost that you've got a lot of coals to work with. So get your fire going early. 
So we've got a fresh barramundi, it's literally hours old. So I'm going to do this really simple and let the flavours of the barramundi really come out. Now I'm using the camper kitchen, I've got heaps of space here. Aluminium, I'm going to keep it real, real simple here. I've got some spices, I've got some oregano, I'll put a bit of curry powder, some lime, some onion, and that's basically it, some salt and pepper. Now I'm going to wrap it up and just literally put it straight on those coals, turn it over. This will be one of the best eating fish you'll ever eat. Make sure you wrap that barra up good and tight. After that, it really is a patience game. A fish of this size will take an hour, an hour and a half perhaps. There's no point in rushing it and putting a heap of coals in. All you'll do is burn the outside and have it raw on the inside. And that's good for us. Time to sit back and enjoy a beer. That is. Yes, that's barramundi, as fresh as it gets. <laughs> that's pretty good. There's nothing more to say about that. That we, is. We need forks, we need. Well, well maybe we not. Don't really. <laughs> Stick around because in part three, we explore the Usher Point area and visit something truly out of this world. Time to pack up camp in the morning and start making our way south. Alright boys, we've come to an overgrown little bit of track here. It's um, got a real big step up, so I'm going to try and, I don't know, heck, try and climb out of this big rut. So, it's massive actually. That is a rather large rut. I can't see anything mate. You can see Sean just picking a line here and taking it easy, but at the same time making sure he's got enough momentum to get him up and through there. <laughs> Having watched Seano, I now know exactly the line that I'm going to take. I've engaged first gear low range here and I've put my rear locker in. I'm not using my front locker at this stage because I do want to be able to turn and I find slightly difficult to turn with the front locker in. And as you can see, we've made it through that with no dramas. No dramas. I'll be interested to see how Dion goes here with the trailer, but I reckon that big 79 with the amount of power it's got is gonna walk straight up there. And that is exactly what it's done. That thing not only sounds insane, but it makes everything look way too easy. Coming along this section of track, we could see just how much the wet season changes these things. Massive ruts have been formed, and it's pretty much washed away the entire track. But that won't stop us. We've got shovels and the Dirty 30. Pretty typical on the top end, especially when you're early in the season, just after a bit of a wet. We didn't have much of a wet this season, but still, a heck of erosion's taking place in this track. Half the track is actually washed right away. Just water's come through, bang, half the track's gone. So that's where shovel comes in handy. A few blokes, get some logs, whatever you can find. Try and build this down, and hopefully, we can make somewhat of a road back here. I think other travellers might even thank us for it. We're getting just about anything that we can find to try and help build this track back up again. I'm talking rocks, logs, dirt, you name it, we're throwing it in there. Let's see how we go. No, 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 go back, go back. Where am I? I can't even see. Okay, we're going to have to take this slow and steady, metre by metre. 
trouble here is that if anything gives way or we push too hard, we're going to do panel damage. These ruts are huge. Keep coming! Shono's got twin locks and he's got 4.6 dip gears in this, so that helps slow things right down and just do things calculated. Yeah! Oh! <laughs> I did not expect that. That was insane. That's really cool. I can smell a bit of clutch. I had no choice but to ride that a little bit. That's cool. That's impressive. I didn't expect that. All right. I'll let the midget truck have a go. Okay, I was quietly confident coming through this having watched Shorno. I know what short he's capable of, and the short wheelbase in this situation, because it is so tight, is really going to help me out. Especially as I drop in here and have to power back out the other side. There's going to be some wheel lift, but no dramas at all. Of course, I've got to hand it over to the lockers as well. They really did help. That's him, that's him. Nice drive, man. Now the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm concerned about Dion coming through here. Not so much the 79, but the trailer. He hasn't got a great deal of flex, and with the extra weight, this could prove problematic. Look at that, though. By goodness, he's right in there now, and it's all about horsepower. That big V8 engine. And, of course, Dion knows how to use it. I don't think he's even concerned about the trailer. So long as the 79 gets up, which it does, the trailer is just going to follow, which it does. That is a good drive, mate. That's a go. That sick. <laughs> yeah. With the tougher stuff behind us, we're full steam ahead to the beach. Usher Point is a fair trek off the PDR. Around 60 kilometres of winding tracks and through thick bushland, rainforest and wastelands. favourite places in Australia. I'm with you. Look at that campsite down there, mate. I'm going to be hard pressed to leave here today. I don't know if we should. I reckon we should even make camp down here. Who knows? We might even be able to cross the Logan Jack. I don't know. There's just so many opportunities down here for adventure. What's that tide doing? She going out? Yeah, she's going out. It won't be low until another couple of hours. All right, let's go and have a look at the back caves and go and look at the river. And then I might just cross it. Whether you blokes follow me or not, that's up to you. <laughs> yeah, mate. I'm, I'm with you there. Yeah, I've got to cross this one here. I think there's a few of these, actually. You're going to come across a heap of these rocky headlands along the beach here, and you can take two different routes. It's up to you. Either head over the rocks or go around them, but risk finding a sinkhole in the sand. Of course, the rocks, you do have the risk of tyre damage, and there's also saltwater risks on the other side. It's about 50-50, robbing from Peter to feed Paul. It really is a risk-reward situation, and it's up to you to figure out what's the best way to go when you get here. Just a perfect car size gap. This beach right here acts like a huge catchment zone, and all sorts of things get washed up. I mean things like buoys, boats, Thongs. There's even planes been found on here. However, the one thing that I've been really excited to get to see again is the bat caves. Now, these are not huge caves, and of course, the bats that inhabit them are not very big either. But you're guaranteed of seeing them every time you get down to Usher Point. Quite oh, lovely. These guys hold up in here during the day and come out at night to feed. So if you're quiet and careful and come in with a small torch, you should be able to see all these cool little bats. Those little bats though, look at them. Oh, they're insane, they're insane. Look, they're actually, the face on that one closest to us. Yeah. Looks like Hang a on a second. Looks like a pig, I'd say. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> that I was here four years ago, I was about four years old, so you never know your luck, mate. <laughs> that looks a lot like you. Now we've got arguably one of the most challenging sections of this beach. They're trying to get off the beach. Really, really soft sand. We got bogged several times just coming onto the beach with this soft sand. Now we've got to go back uphill. So we're lowering the tide pressures even more. 
So 18 PSI, now going down to 12 PSI on the Land Cruiser, and even less on the trailer. A bit of luck, fingers crossed, and a lot of right foot. Who knows, he might have snatched him off the beach, he might even make it on his own steam. We'll see in a second. Okay, Dion is really gonna need this run up and every ounce of power from that V8 to get the trailer and the truck up out of here unscathed. Come on, son. Go, go, go. Listen to that thing go, gee whiz. Secretly, I didn't think he was gonna make it, but the amount of power that truck has got, nothing would surprise me anymore. Look, he's got track, he's got the hard bit. <laughs> Well done, mate. That's a bloody good drive. No worries. All right, I'm coming through, boys. Bloody rock hard, mate. Okay, I've stuffed up here. I'm going to say it was the three four-wheel drive rule. I'm the third four-wheel drive coming through, and that corner has been so badly chewed up. Truth be told, I actually came through in the wrong gear and didn't have the momentum to carry me around the corner. Ah, no, boys, I can't get through this churned up section that you two have done. I blame you, Sean. -o. Hey Stu, I don't think you'll be able to snatch me here mate because we've got that water directly in front. Get the max chase off the roof, eh? Yeah mate, I'll just, uh, I'll just do a solo recovery, I'll go backwards, take a different line, eh? Sounds good. Can you reach the max tracks? They're pretty high. Dog, you just stay there and enjoy your own company. Okay. <laughs> I could probably muck around here trying to go forward back. Chances are I'm just going to get more and more bogged. This is amazingly soft sand. As such, I'm not going to muck around and I'm going to go to the simple and effective Max Tracks. Okay, the real trick with these Max Tracks is to avoid, at all costs, wheel spin. Because if you spin your wheels, you just knock these little nubbins off that are on top. That's actually what's giving the grip. And obviously, if you knock these off, well, they don't work at all well. You don't need to, you don't need to get wheel spin. You really only need to idle. It feels weird because you feel like you need to just give it everything you've got to get out of here, but you don't. You can idle out of here and then give it more when you get on the sand. So, fingers crossed, let's give it a go. Yes, yes, yes. I'm trying to get through here nice and slow. Everything, if you ask me. Okay, Stu has seen exactly what not to do and exactly what to do. I guarantee you he's going to use that right boot of his. Go for it, mate. Look at that, like a rat out of a drain pipe. Straight up that hill and he's out of here. Good drive, buddy. We were really keen to take one last look at Usher Point, one of the true wonders of the Cape. It's got history, great four-wheel driving, amazing camping, and even though it's windy as buggery, you can see why Shono absolutely loves this place. And with views like this, who wouldn't? You know, after a week of exploring up here, it really is sad to leave this place and jump back on the ferry and head home. But finding these secret spots, I tell you, it's what it's all about. There you go. Oh, what a tight. It is tight, bit. mate. Real tight squeezing here. Jardine Ferry, that means for us, well, we're heading back south. A bit gutted about that, if I'm honest. Mate, there's so much to the tip of Cape York other than the sign, and I've been absolutely blown away. Yeah, there really is. I think if you're just going to come straight up here and go to the sign and come back down, of course, you're doing the telly track, you're going to go out to one of the beaches there and stay in the van parks. That's fantastic. But please, do yourself a favour, do your research, and spend, I don't know, give yourself another week. Easy. If you can, easy. another week. A minimum. At the tip. So what I'm saying is we're on the Jardine now. We've got a long old drive south. So the tip's just there. Spend a week up there. You'll have an absolute blast. The OTL's this way, the tip's that way. I'll tell you what, I'm coming back next time because there's some great fishing, some great camping. It's got everything. That is paradise up it there. It really is. Me. I'm surprised you haven't put a line over the side, mate. I was thinking about trolling. Oh, <laughs> you're going to let me? No, he won't. No. <laughs> Folks, we'll catch you next time. You know exactly where. I'm going to let him say it. We'll drive action. I'll oh, see yeah, you there. Yeah, sure, no. Catch you guys.